Welcome to Oakland Connection. I'm your host, Tim Burns. I'm joined by Steve Kirsten. Steve is the head of Michigan Auto Law, which is an 18 attorney law firm that is headquartered in Farmington Hills, Michigan, here in Oakland County. And they have five offices located throughout the state of Michigan. Uh, Michigan Auto Law helps people injured in car, truck, and motorcycle accidents. Steve has received the top reported auto verdict or truck accident verdict for the past three years in a row. He is a Michigan Lawyers Weekly Lawyer of the Year for a uh, record-breaking truck accident settlement, and he also is a Michigan Lawyers Weekly leader in the law for his efforts to promote truck safety when he was president of the AAJ Truck Accident Litigation Group. Steve serves on several governing boards and has lectured nationally on the topics of helping attorneys litigate auto accidents, cases, and also traumatic brain injury cases. So thanks for being on the show today, Steve. Thank you so much for having me. So I want to start off a little bit with uh, when it comes to auto accidents and, and problems that you may have, no-fault insurance tends to be the governing law. Can you tell us a little bit of actually for the people in the audience what no-fault involves? Sure. So no-fault is the greatest thing that most people know nothing about. Right. Um, it, it's, it's a special thing to Michigan that most states don't have where you have special benefits that you recover from your own insurance company regardless of fault which is why they call it no fault. Right. They include your medical bills for life, your wage loss for three years, replacement services, which means if you need help around the house because of your injuries and you need, let's say, your wife or your, your child to help you, uh, they can be paid replacement services at up to $20 a day and then medical mileage every time you go to or from any doctor or hospital. Okay. It's very different from the vast majority of states where they either have no no fault and you you in theory would try to collect any medical bills that you incur from the person who causes the accident that right. doesn't work normally very well because most people don't have enough insurance mm -hmm. so it ends up going to Medicaid and the taxpayers okay uh, so what it really means what, what I always say to my clients and, and my friends is it, it is such an unbelievable hidden jewel in Michigan because the, the Michigan citizens can receive a quality of care and a higher level of medical care that they that people cannot receive almost anywhere else in the country. Right. So now um, we were talking before the show, and you mentioned that there might be some changes to the meta uh, to the uh, to the law. Can you tell a little bit about that? Yeah, it's it's interesting. Um, politics, mostly. Um, you know, I think what happens is the insurance industry and their lobbyists um, smell opportunity with um, all three branches of government in Republican hands. So the the argument that has been made is even though no fault is considered um, by everyone, consumer groups, insurance industry studies, um, independent commissions to be the best insurance in the United States. Mm -hmm. Um, it's also a little bit more expensive in Michigan than it is in many other states. Okay. So the argument has been now's our chance to dramatically alter mi no fault in Michigan with, for example, PIP choice that would limit your ability to recover medical benefits up to, let's say, $50,000, which is actually the number that they have in, in the most recent bill okay. in, in, the, in the Senate. Now, will that prohibit you from... Uh, suing at all for those damages or just through the no-fault law? It, it, you know, it, it, because it's a bill, mm -hmm. um, it hasn't actually gone that far. But the, the problem is, is that um, the, the political forces are, you know, in the insurance industry and sadly, I think, uh, in the legislature seem to be coalescing behind it. And, you know, there, there's, there's a lot of things that are, that are really, really dangerous and wrong with these proposals. That, that really are not getting out to the public. Okay. So, um, for example... Okay, go ahead. <laughs> if I might. Um, what, what people lose sight of is, you know, a couple things. All right. You know, one, the, the level and the quality of care in Michigan is really, truly so much better than anywhere else in the country. And number two, um, this is done without any cost to the taxpayers. And number three, unlike our... our current health bill uh, legislation that, that passed the federal government, which was thousands and thousands of pages, mm -hmm. all of this in Michigan was created 40 years ago by one sentence. Oh, wow. So 
instead of looking at it, and, and it's never been changed really in 40 years, the no-fault side of things. Okay. So the, the problem I have, and it's not just, just me as, as a no-fault lawyer, but mm. it's consumer groups, it's advocates for people with serious brain injuries and spinal cord injuries, um, it's AARP, it's the Coalition Protecting Auto No-Fault, which is mostly hospital medical groups. The problem that they have is they're saying, wait a minute, um, before we drastically alter no-fault in Michigan, there are some really simple, easy solutions that we can make here that would dramatically lower the cost and that would keep um, really the nation's best no-fault insurance in this state. Okay. And, and the solution really is there is an, an independent bipartisan commission report that came out in um, uh, 2007. And it was chaired by Jay Angoff, who was the insurance commissioner from Missouri. Okay. And what they determined was the auto insurance companies in Michigan actually lead the nation in profitability. Okay. And that's staggering. That means out of all 50 states, they make more money selling insurance in Michigan than anywhere else. Right. And the problem with that is that Michigan is also one of the only states where the insurance commissioner has no power to regulate the amount of money that these auto insurance companies can charge to regulate the amount of profits they can make. Okay. So as Michigan residents, we're forced by law to purchase insurance for our cars, mm -hmm. no-fault insurance, right. but our insurance commissioner can't regulate the amount of profits that these insurance companies charge and make for a product that we're forced to buy. Right. And the argument that I think a lot of people are starting to make is, wait a minute, before you take away the nation's best insurance system and, and transfer all these costs through Medicaid to the taxpayers, which is really what's going to happen when, when PIP choice comes to Michigan, um, why don't we just look at the easy solution and say, why can't we regulate the amount of profits that these insurance companies are charging? They really don't need to lead the nation in profitability in the state. Right. So essentially what we're looking at is if this legislation was to go through is a decrease in benefits but an increase in the profitability for the insurance companies? It's, it's the best of both worlds for the insurance companies because their exposure is now capped. That's what PIP Choice does. It mm -hmm. caps their exposure at, let's say, $50,000, but it keeps in place and actually locks in their profits. Okay. And then it's the worst thing possible for you and I and, and for your viewers because right now we have the nation's best insurance, but at no cost to the taxpayers. Right. But what happens now with PIP Choice is all those people who um, would be covered by no fault now have to turn the vast majority would have to turn to Medicaid, right? And that means to the taxpayers, right? Now, if um, someone wants to learn more about this topic, do you have any uh, suggestions for where they can go to get more information? You, you know, it's it's a it's changing with legislation every day. But our website, which is MichiganAutoLaw.com, um, I'm the chair of the Auto No Fault. Um, committee for the Michigan Association for Justice and okay. we write about it um, frequently on our blog and we also have a book on it um, actually a couple books one on, on how to purchase insurance and one just explaining what no fault is for the consumer right now another uh, issue of hot debate that I want to have you weigh in is is whether or not uh, Michigan should get rid of making uh, motorcycle riders uh, wear their helmets what do you think yeah, of that? Uh, I'm a little nervous talking about this on television because, <laughs> because a lot of people are very passionate about this issue right um, but I think the the argument for repealing the Michigan motorcycle helmet law is insane okay um, you know Right now, we can show statistically that people without helmets um, have a 45% greater fatality rate than people wearing helmets. Okay. So we know for sure that people will die. Many more people will die without helmets. The other side of that is helmets not only save lives, but they take what could be catastrophic spinal cord and traumatic brain injuries right. and because of the protections afforded by the helmet, they become much less catastrophic. Okay. So it, what we're talking about here, and this is the real problem I have with this debate, and, and frankly, I, I've helped motorcycle accident victims throughout my career, so I've seen both sides. Okay. But what we're saying is, is that we are going to repeal a law that is going to end up costing the taxpayers 
a tremendous amount more money in the form of, of higher cost through Medicaid payments that is going to ensure that more people are going to die and more people are going to be catastrophically injured and the argument on the other side of it is always well I have an individual liberty I have a freedom mm -hmm. to choose not to wear my helmet right. I, I have a, and this is what I always hear I want to have the wind blowing through my hair when I'm riding my bike right. you know and, and the argument I always make to them is you know I think your personal liberty to not wear a helmet ends when it infringes on my personal liberty to have to pay for your medical expenses for catastrophic injury for the rest of your life that could have been prevented if you had just worn a helmet. Right. And that's the argument you normally never hear from the people who are trying to repeal the law. <laughs> right, but it is a passionate topic. I've uh, seen some heated uh, conversations on this it, very subject. There. It's, it's really passionate, and, and the shame of it is this is where I think politics is really rearing its ugly head because the motorcycle lobby is, um, they vote. Uh, and, and they're single issue voters and politicians are a little bit afraid of the motorcycle lobby and I think sadly that means that this year is going to be the year that, that the motorcycle helmet law does get repealed in Michigan okay. and that's very sad. Now in regards to uh, a car accident or personal injury regarding to an automobile or a truck accident, uh, you know with the no fault there you're dealing with your own insurance company not necessarily the insurance company of the, the other participant. Why would you need to get an attorney involved? Um, hopefully you don't. <laughs> if, if insurance companies did everything they're supposed to do, then, then people don't need my help. Okay. And, and, you know, I, I certainly hope that's the case. Um, the, the problem truly is this. You know, Michigan is one of only six states in the nation where we have no bad faith laws, no punitive damages, mm -hmm. no Consumer Protection Act right. that you can use when insurance companies really... Um, engage in very bad behavior and what that really means for Michigan citizens is that they are really treated on the whole far worse by insurance companies in the state than they are in many other states because they can get away with it because there's right. no um, big stick so to speak uh, to deter really bad behavior. Right. Can you uh, tell us some of the uh, uh, better or, or worse insurance agencies to deal with? You know, I, I, I write a blog every year where I always pick out um, insurance companies I like and insurance companies I really don't like. Okay. Um, so if you get on, on MichiganAutoLaw.com, I have my six worst insurance companies. Mm -hmm. But the um, my current favorites right now, um, my, my current favorite, because I, I probably sued them all, <laughs> is, um, I really like Grange. Okay. Um, I think Grange is great. I think auto owners on the whole does a nice job. Okay. As far as the larger insurance companies go, I think AAA actually, um, on the whole, does a nice job okay. of, of paying what they should. The, the thing I would warn people is if you get AAA or any insurance, uh, you really want to make sure that you're, you're, you're purchasing two additional coverages that most AAA agents will not tell you about, mm -hmm. and that's uninsured motorist and underinsured motorist. Okay. Really valuable protections that most people don't know about. Okay. And um, we're running short on time, so just to wrap up here. Uh, Do I talk too much? Uh, no, you've <laughs> been a great guest. We appreciate having you on the show. And But you have a lot more valuable information on some booklets. Can you tell us just briefly what those booklets are, and uh, they can get that on your website as well, right? Sure. So um, what we've done for the public is we've tried to create consumer protection guides for them that explain their rights um, if they're involved in a car accident in Michigan. So what you have to remember is when you're injured in a car accident, you actually have three cases, not one. Okay. You're mini tort, mm -hmm. uh, so it's how to collect your car damage, and we have a book on that. Okay. We have a book on your no-fault benefits, okay. so hopefully you don't need to hire a lawyer, and it says all the things that you're entitled to and how to get them. Okay. And then we have a book on basically what your rights are if you're seriously injured in a car accident, what you should know and what you're entitled to. Uh, that we make available to the public for free right. and all they need to do is get on our website and, and they can uh, order one. Okay. Well, I appreciate you being on the show. Uh, you know, we addressed some issues that I think a lot of people really don't think about until you have a problem and uh, it's always better to be proactive and get a little bit of information before you have a problem, I always believe, and uh, appreciate your uh, excellent information today. Well, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. So, I'm Tim Burns. You're watching Oakland Connection and we'll be right back after this brief message.